Okay, I'm actually doing a small interview here with Mr. Mark Reed, director of the Brentwood Theater. And um, we're, he's going to answer a few questions for us about Ooh. the theater. <laughs> <laughs> nice ones, I hope. <laughs> yes, it will be nice ones. Um, good, good. What makes The Plotters of Cabbage Patch Corner such a special show for the Brentwood Theater? Oh, it's just wonderful. It's, it, we've had some of the best reactions ever to a show. And what we wanted to do this year, after a couple of roll Dahl, and Dahl is a little bit dark and a bit spooky, a um, little bit scary in places, we thought this year we'd go for a very gentle show, one that we could bring a four-year-old, even three-year-old, and we've had two-year-olds in, and watching it and enjoying the show. We wanted something that was magical, so we've got magic in this. We've got insects appearing behind curtains and, and lots of effects and lots of bright colours and beautiful colours. There's about 14 songs in it, so it never stops. Um, it, it's almost completely sung through score. Very beautiful. The kids adore it, absolutely adore it, and, and it's great. And, of course, we, you know, it's the first time I've ever had in one of my shows a, a couple of uh, Hollywood stars. <laughs> How is it having Stephen Moore as a patron of your theatre? It's really quite peculiar, because he's a good friend. I only met him about four or five years ago, before he went into True Blood. And he was um, just starting to make his name big time on BBC. And his name was starting to be known. He did a couple of pilot series, um, appeared in a lot of sort of soap operas and that sort of thing. And, and, and he was just about to become known and then suddenly he told me, I'm leaving the BBC. Like, oh, Steve, you can't, you know, just as everyone's getting to know you. He said, no, I've got, got a job over in America. Didn't know too much about it at the time. And then just suddenly, wow, we started getting all this information coming over about all what he was getting up to over there. And this just mega show that HBO were putting on when it's turned out into one of their biggest shows ever. And it's been amazing. It's been absolutely amazing. I know that the Stephen Moyer Kids yeah. Fundraiser, Theatre Kids Fundraiser, has been, you know, big in helping support mm. the theatre. What does that support mean for the theatre and for you personally? It means everything. I mean, it really, really does. This is a small community theatre. We've got three full-time staff. We've got lots of volunteers. And, you know, when times get a little bit tough, as they sometimes do, the support the monetary support we've had from our international fans uh, and just as much you know the constant emails messages christmas cards and everything it's just wonderful it keeps us going it's hard work here there's barely a day off um we work long hours but i love it i i i've, I've been in very different industries i've never been happier this is such a a lovely job um with all of these people and sharing clips on YouTube, sharing photos, sharing our love of Stephen and Anna. It's just amazing. It, it really has made a difference. And if we had not have had this money as donations this year, it might have been difficult to put on a Christmas show at all. It made that much difference. And it's been so lovely to have three schools coming to us who have never been here before, can't afford themselves to pay for it. And we know that because um, certainly two of them had booked in and then rang us to say the parents cannot afford it. We've sent a letter home saying it's going to cost this much for the ticket, it's going to cost this much for a coach on top. And the parents have said, we're really sorry, we can't afford to pay that this year. So we know that genuinely these schools would not have come to see the show. And the kids came along and we've got some beautiful pictures that we've shared. Just seeing how much they enjoyed seeing the show and then meeting all the actors afterwards. What led you to um, ask Stephen to provide the voice of Mr. Big One and Anna to provide the voice of Mrs. Big One? It was a tongue-in-cheek request. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Big One appear about five times for about half a minute each time um, and talk about going into the garden to see how it is. And they spray the ugly insects and that's when the ugly insects start rebelling and refusing to look after the garden. Um, and it was a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek request to Steve back in May or June, before any of us knew that they were getting married. So that's, that was a nice you know, cherry on the icing um, with it. And I just said to them, look, please do it if you think it's a bit of fun. I've never, I never like asking anyone to do anything just because 
I think they should do it. They've got to enjoy it. And I think they saw the funny side and you can tell they've enjoyed recording it. Um, they sent over, um, just at the start of the show, all of the clips ready for us to use. They also sent through a couple where um, they'd re-recorded it and you could just hear that they were having fun. And that was great because that's what, to me, life is about. It's about having fun and that's what we do here. You can probably just about hear in the background coming through from the theatre the tonight's performance going on. Unfortunately with the bad weather we've only got about a third of the audience in but the cast and the audience are having fun and we can't ask for anything more than that. Do you think that Stephen and Anne are going to be able to come and see the show at all this year? Or? Oh, I would love to see them. He's a good friend. You know, that's that's what's so nice. It's lovely that he gets all of this adulation for all the different shows he's done, especially True Blood. I met him about five or six years ago when his mum, who performs here herself a couple of times a year and helps run one of the groups who performs here, um, she was just immensely proud of her son who was an actor. And at the time he was in the Royal Shakespeare, and also when he was working up into uh, performing in Nylon and some of his other pieces. And she just introduced me to him, and he's just a decent, nice guy. He's a really nice guy. And when he came in last Christmas, he did manage to fly in on the last day. Um, he really enjoyed himself. We looked after his family, and he was just a really, really good friend. And if he's free, and if he's got time, I just hope he comes in and sees us, because um, yeah, we love them. We love them. What's your wish in 2011 for the theatre? Oh, to carry on growing the way it is. We're getting, we've always been the community theatre. We've been here for 17 years now. But I'm getting some weeks, you know, one or two new volunteers coming forward. People wanting to come in to make a difference. And the number of volunteers we've now got we can start looking at new ideas. I'm always coming up with ideas of things we can do, ways to fundraise, ways to get people involved. But, you know, I'm hoping that these people are going to come in and take us in a new direction so that we still, we have to remember our main job is to be here for the local operatic societies and dramatic societies to come in, to choose their own plays, to rehearse them elsewhere, to put their costumes together but to bring it here to perform, and that's our big job. There are other things we can do. We have people with um, educational needs here, um, working as volunteers and even as staff, um, and we, we support them as much as we can. We have groups who meet here who have special needs, are very disabled, that sort of thing. And I just think more and more, that's the way we're gonna grow in the future. And yeah, I'm looking forward to next year. It's gonna be a good year. Do you think that Stephen or Anna would ever do an actual show here at the theatre? I would love that. That's one of my dreams. That they are so so busy. I mean, they are. They're both such good family people, and they do spend a lot of time visiting Stephen's mum when he's over here, who lives not too far away, and visiting the kids and taking them out and that sort of thing. And I'd hate to eat into that time. But um, yes, Stephen's been here several times. He has um, been a judge on a sort of a, 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 a Britain's Got Talent type little thing we did here and he sat and judged it for us, um, which was great fun to have him there. And, oh, I would love them to be in a show. I really, really would. But I think because of all what they're doing just at the moment, just to get their voices into our show is as much as we can wish for, but hey, who knows? Well, hopefully we'll get more of them in the future to do voiceovers for the next set of plays that you do yeah. and stuff like that. That would be great. Absolutely. Um, I think that's actually it that we have. But, you know, this was just a short interview with Mark P. Reed, And you wanted to say... You know. I wanted to say thank you. And it's lovely to meet you as well. We've exchanged emails and Facebook messages and things. Uh, you're such a lovely lady. And I think you just personify all of our very generous donors from over in America. And as I say... The money is essential, but it's also, well, it's Christmas, let's say. It's also the love we get over the internet. It really does keep us going here, and I'm just very grateful to you all. And so I hope you do have a lovely Christmas, a fantastic New Year, and please just keep in touch.